Welcome to Beyond Death, where we examine near-death experiences from people who say they died, visited the other side, and came back. Before we begin, I want to again thank everyone that sent prayers while I was in the hospital. This channel may not have the most subscribers, but I honestly believe it has the best. I am truly grateful for each and every one of you. Today's NDE comes to the channel via anonymous email from a woman who states she died met Jesus, and had a rather interesting conversation about the future. Let's get into it. Dear Beyond Death, I have been a subscriber to your channel for a few months now and love the scenery you depict in your videos. I read all the comments and am sorry you often have to put up with the naysayers who only click on a video to attempt to discredit the person who experienced the ND being narrated. I wish to tell my own near-death experience, but I also wish to remain anonymous because my own family turned against me when I first told them it. I was called crazy and worse. My parents whom I no longer talked to even tried forcing me into counseling with the pastor of our church. How hard is it for a true believer of God to believe he has the power to show us things beyond this earthly plane of existence? You may feel free to use my experience on your channel. Again. I do ask to remain anonymous, because when people hear that you have had a near-death experience, it just seems to bring out the worst in them, and I do not want or need that in my life. My NDE happened in the early 1990s. I was a college student, living in the dorms, and partying probably a bit too much. After one particular night of drinking with friends, I became separated from the group. This particular night, I was more than a little drunk. One minute, we were all bar hopping along the university strip, and the next I began to feel extremely hot, so I excused myself and stepped outside for some fresh air. Once I had regained my composure, is composure the right word, I stepped back inside the bar and could not locate anyone from the group I was with. I found out later they thought I had left, and they went on to the next bar. After wandering through the club for what had to be at least 20 minutes, I decided to head back to the dorms. This is where things really went fuzzy for me. I remember stopping along the way to rest on a bus stop bench and then deciding to lay down for just a minute. I have no idea how long that minute turned into because I passed out. When I woke up or thought I had woken up, I found myself staring down at the bench. And it took a brief moment for me to realize two things. One. I no longer felt intoxicated and two, I was staring at my own self lying on the bench. While this should have been enough to freak me out, it didn't. I felt no connection to the body I had left behind. In fact, I felt as if a newfound freedom that always should have been there had arrived. I did not care for that body, nor did I wish to return to it. Looking around, which I could now do without any effort on my part, I realized I could now see in a 360-degree radius. I could also see objects and people that were far away as if they were right next to me. There was a tunnel that had appeared behind me, yet elevated maybe 15 feet in the air, and somehow I just knew I was to go through it, so I did. At first I floated gently through the tunnel, but I gradually began to pick up speed. I cannot begin to describe the feeling that washed over me as I plunged headlong towards an unknown destination. Time seemed to no longer exist and I am not sure how far this tunnel took me, but I can say for sure that I left Earth's atmosphere and moved through space. After a bit, again time was not a thing anymore so I can't say for sure how long it was, I began to see a light in the distance. The light grew bigger as I got closer to it. I know everyone speaks of the love they feel when they reach the light, and this also happened to me. If you gave me a million years, and a million words, I still could not begin to describe that love in a way that anyone that has not been to it could understand. It was like being embraced by the entire universe in one gigantic hug that completely filled every nerve. As I basked in the overwhelming feeling of love that flowed through me, I saw a man walking towards me. He wore a white robe and had a smile that was so beautiful. As he reached me, I heard him speaking to me without speaking. It was as if the words were just inside my head. I could hear them, even though his mouth never moved. I have been waiting on you, my child, he said. You have. I asked in the same telepathic manner that he had used when he spoke. 
Yes, I have he answered before continuing with. And since you're going to ask, Jesus is the name you know me by although I am called by many names. You have been chosen to meet me here and now because you have reached a crucial time in your life. Your future will be determined by choices you will soon make. What choices are those I asked? You are at a crossroads. I will show you two possible futures, but in the end which path you take remains within the boundaries of your own free will to choose. Jesus reached out a hand and touched my forehead, and I first saw myself in a doctor's office, only I was older, and the doctor stating to me that my liver was failing due to so much drinking I had done in my youth. Next Jesus showed me my second future. In it I was about the same age as in the first future, only I now was working as a social worker counseling at risk youth and making the difference in my community. I appeared healthier and happier. When Jesus removed his hand I asked him, Lots of people drink. Why am I chosen to see the possible outcomes? What makes me special? Jesus replied by saying, Every puzzle contains many pieces that all must fit together in a specific order before the final picture reveals itself. This has always been the case since the beginning. Simply look to the stars and realize all the pieces that had to come together for life to even exist on Earth. If even one were out of place, the entire picture changes. I cannot say why you are such an important piece, but I do know that you were chosen to be shown. Now return to Earth and become the piece you were intended to be. I turned to face the tunnel, but before I began my trip back to Earth, I did have one final question to ask. Jesus, all my life I have heard that you are coming back. Can you tell me when that will be? Only my father knows that answer my child, Jesus replied. My trip back through the tunnel was much like the one I had taken to the light. Approaching my body, which was still on the bus stop bench, my descent slowed until I hovered directly above it. There was a part of my soul that did not want to rejoin the body that lay there lifeless. It wanted to return to the light, but glancing around I could see the tunnel had closed. Suddenly I felt a force pull me back inside my body with a loud pop sound. I immediately awoke. I was cold but no longer felt any intoxication at all. I got up and walked back to my dorm room and went to sleep while wondering if I had dreamt of meeting Jesus or if I had really went somewhere. Somewhere over the next several weeks I gained enough courage to tell my parents about my experience. That was probably the biggest mistake of my life. They assumed I was either crazy or on drugs. They further enlisted my church pastor to counsel me and he practically told me I had Satan inside me for such blasphemy. My life did change. As I said before, I stopped talking to my parents, and I even stopped drinking. My grades improved once I cut out partying even though that also meant I lost more than a few friends. I guess people only want to hang out with those that are on the same thought process level as them. I ended up graduating and moving to a major U.S. city where I now work as a social worker helping at risk youth, just as I was shown. I still do not know where or how I fit into this puzzle we call life, but I do believe that I am part of a glorious picture and I strive every day to do my best to help these kids. Perhaps one of them is the reason I was chosen to see my future. Only time will tell. Notes from Beyond Death my personal thoughts are that this is such an amazing ND, and I appreciate being allowed to share it. If you have had your own near-death experience you would like featured on this channel, please feel free to send it to the email address in the description. Until next time, stay blessed.